Hey everyone, Georgie here with Ukraine Matters. We still have topics to discuss from yesterday, but I want to start with Avdiivka because yesterday in a video I reported that there was still another Russian attack that was massive and reportedly very massive that was ongoing on the flanks of Avdiivka. And I explained that a lot of Ukrainian forces have been engaged in that fighting. What I did not understand is just the sheer scale of it. If you have not seen data that came out of the Ukrainian general staff for today, then to yesterday's losses for Russians were the biggest in the war single day losses period. Not even when it was the start of the war with Russians just driving in huge columns by being a fish in a barrel where Ukrainian partisans were just shooting them left, right and center. Not even at that moment losses were so high. And this is important for us all to be aware of because again, this demonstrates the absolute hubris of Russians that even after the direction where they already lost a lot of things, they are just repeating exactly the same mistake except it's many times over because they looked at it. Wow, we didn't break through hard enough at Avdiivka. Well, we need to send in more armor vehicles. And the numbers are just staggering. The 55 tanks per, per loss per day, the over, over 1,300 dead Russians. Again, I understand Ukrainian side reporting numbers are, are inflated. Fair enough. But let's just take Ukrainian numbers and let's not look at the numbers at all. Even just looking at the dynamic, the change in those numbers, it's already telling us a lot, despite the fact that we know that at least a third of these numbers were already confirmed by the Russians, the Russians themselves. Uh, more than that, something that I can tell you that was not a secret, it was already exposed by the Russian channels, is that on this direction we saw already uh, Ukrainian units that were previously operating in the Orikhiv direction, such as the 47th um, Brigade Magura, which is known for because they are the one that are operating Bradleys. And you've, heard, you've seen them for sure in the Orikhiv direction. Well, the 47th Brigade, they were actually now also helping defend Avdiivka. Right now, they were mostly on rotation, so they were in reserves. But this explains us very, very well what Ukrainians... Uh, thought about this coming Russian attacks. They knew. They knew that they will be coming. They knew that Russia was amassing their forces and they had reserves to dedicate to that area because they responded in kind. They've prepared the positions. And right now we don't have a lot of information coming with regards how much Russia has advanced because with regards how much resources Russia has used, I am expecting certain positions to be lost. But to kind of round it all up, for the resources that Russia sent to this direction, and Russia has lost in this direction, nothing short of a complete collapse of Avdiivka plus maybe Marinka as well, like no, basically this whole part uh, right here, nothing short of complete collapse, encirclement of Russia, uh, Ukrainian troops, or something in the, uh, in the uh, ballpark, is untenable, untenable. It is completely and devastating. No single army in the world can fight like this. You tell a US military, hey, by the way, we had this one day where we tried storming and 55 tanks, 55 Abrams tanks got destroyed. What do you think will happen to that commander or, or any kind of... Uh, operational intelligence, operational decision-making, uh, what kind of a response do you would you have from society? It's just ludicrous. And this just blows my mind every day. I know this work has been going on for so long, but it's still, it's completely, completely shocks me every single time. And I know why this is happening. I can explain it. Watch my previous video. I explained it quite well. The shock effect just doesn't go away. Then something I want to talk to you about is the situation that is uh, on the Kherson area here. Uh, here we had certain reports from the 
from the Russian side about Ukrainian Ukrainian groups crossing in and taking over these two settlements and supposedly also taking this settlement right here and essentially putting a lot of pressure trying to focus down on this road right over here trying to gain control of this road this is what Russians have reported what was the reality a lot of uh, a lot of analysts started claiming that this is indeed Ukrainian crossing this is indeed something that Ukrainians have been planned for and that's something that Ukrainians have been looking to do uh, and it's not just a simple raid where and it's actually Ukrainians try to actually get a stronger foothold uh, this overlapped with two factors that strengthened that um, statement factor number one is that the crossing that was done the the these two settlements that were challenged were done by the marines of the ukrainian armed forces so instead of just a special operations units that usually are operating and, and executing raids it was the special the marine forces that were operating in the area last time marine forces were operating in the area they were able to secure the foothold around the Antonivsky bridge whereas where one of the most famous raids that was for a long time considered to be potential for foothold around Kazachi Lahiri over here that was the special forces of Ukraine so that was the first one then the second uh, confirmation was that uh, I believe it was German training released the footage of Ukrainian Marines learning how to use these uh, rafts uh, the floating rafts to form like a bridges to transfer equipment across the road across the river essentially hinting at potentially Ukrainians trying to establish some kind of uh, mobile crossings for armored vehicles because while Ukrainians would expect fighting in this area for a while they would still need some kind of armored vehicle support in case of Russians sending some kind of armored reinforcements uh, fighting th totally on foot has been proven around Kazachi Lahiri is not really that nice however uh, my sources have reported that so far this was just a raid a reinforced raid but raid nonetheless and we saw a certain footage coming up later on in, in, that showed uh, what was happening and how the forces were landing on the shores and how they were later proceeding towards the settlements. And one of the most important things that that like well, as you as, as I'm watching this war unfold, I started as a person that had absolutely no idea about what the war is, how the war is done what is relevant what is not relevant to watch out for or at some point I started understanding a little bit more and I started understanding that I need to look past the headlines for certain hints on what kind of situation is ongoing as an example if we suddenly hear that Ukrainian aviation is getting shot one plane shot somewhere then the second plane has shot been shot in that area on the headline news it states well Ukraine lost two planes whereas if you kind of look one level below you can say ah so Ukrainians are doing something to engage their op aviation aggressively enough so they are risking it even to be shot so they're putting a lot of pressure for a very specific part of the map and it kind of gives you a better perspective in the same way it's also for this landing the current warfare especially in this uh, zone uh, around Kherson area because this zone to put it a, like a little bit of a side sidestep this zone currently is not controlled by anyone because Ukrainians have control of the right bank of the river which is here and it's higher Ukrainians have a quite a good control with artillery around everything that is uh, ongoing in this area over here so while Russian mobile groups can indeed operate in the area and they can send reinforcements and so on generally speaking any kind of permanent positions are just being targeted and destroyed by drones and artillery of Ukrainians in the same sense Russians because they are operating in this area technically 
they have artillery that is supporting those areas therefore ukrainians cannot just cross because as soon as they cross and try to establish any kind of positions they instantly get targeted by the artillery and mobile groups are being sent to take care of those lightly uh light infantry that cross the the river therefore this created this weird gray zone area around the the river for about 20 kilometers so it's about 20 kilometer zone and russians know that and they actually started building fortifications 20 kilometers after that zone and maybe this is not 20 kilometers i'm just uh, roughly i don't haven't calculated but the point still stands so that area right along the river is uh area with a lot of russian activity but it's a mobile activity and it's an artillery controlled area therefore establishing permanent positions for either side is challenging in that uh, in that area so when we're talking about forces that ukrainians are crossing uh, on the river there is a one specific thing that i'm looking for so when ukrainians are crossing the river to build any kind of permanent positions they need to build them somewhere where it's secure and they need to make sure that those positions are really well fortified or and or hidden to do that there is a tool that is required and that tool is shovel so when i saw the video of ukrainian marines landing on that shore firstly i saw that they were not carrying any kind of heavy backpacks and secondly i noticed that they were uh, carrying uh they were not carrying any shovels so that instantly gave me a very big hint towards that potentially this is not a uh like a raid to dig in and fortify it this is more of a raid to try and see what can be taken and uh, maybe potentially find some kind of weaknesses of russians and so on a raid explore uh, and exploit therefore while russian channels are still claiming that ukrainians are trying to establish their positions so far most of those claims have been very unfounded in my opinion i still think that ukraine would love to put uh, their forces in the area and cross but so far I have not seen any kind of crossing established and whatever landing was happening in the area so far was just light infantry that were not uh, supported with a lot of uh, equipment was not supported with a lot of uh, provision and were not supporting for specific fortification building equipment to make sure so they can build more permanent positions in the area therefore i would think that this is more of a reinforced trading force rather than a very specific rate so rather very specific foundational so that's very 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 important beyond that there are a couple of news that are worth discussing uh news number one is that there are right now discussion about the fact that while ukraine has received these um older missiles and some some people say oh because they're flying less the distance that's why they're worse this is not true attackums missiles that ukraine is using now are actually quite capable and they are actually what ukraine needs specifically right now because while they're flying only to 150 kilometers i explained why i think it's 150 in last video watch that and secondly they contain a lot more bomblets so longer range missiles attack them they contain only 300 bomblets and these ones that ukraine is using are containing 900 bomblets so the area and density of covering that area is just both larger and more dense so whatever is uh, this missile is hitting it's pretty much confirmed is going to destroy especially when hitting the uh, airfields that are close by that's why I wouldn't right now worry about the range of attackums. More importantly, we've heard the news that these attackums missiles, different variations could be explored to be delivered to Ukraine as well. It is still on the table and I'm hoping they will be delivered. Uh, US uh, has already claimed that they will be supporting Ukraine long enough. Biden uh, has made uh, made a whole speech uh, yesterday about uh, the support for ukraine it is expected the support for ukraine will continue will continue on permanent basis and we will see ukraine get stronger and stronger and stronger and uh, overcome russia eventually especially with the suicidal attacks that russia is doing around avdivka 
And then another thing that, that we need to be aware of is the developments within drone technology. A lot of Russians have been reporting both on Bakhmut area and also on the Zaporizhia area. They have been weeping about Ukrainian drones. But they were weeping about Ukrainian drones, not in just sense that the drones are flying and striking. No, it's that drones, the FPV drones, are flying in and striking Russian artillery. Remember we talked about uh, a little about the, the uh, signs, about uh, what kind of signs you can uh, find out beyond the headlines. And the headline here is Ukrainian FPV drones are striking Russian artillery. So what is the... What is the, the actual juice, the actual core of the argument? And the argument is that either Ukrainian drones are now flying a lot further than they were flying before, or Russian artillery, for certain reasons, cannot operate at their effective max range. That Russian artillery, because of, for example, wear and tear, because of a poor technical conditions, they need to operate closer to the front line. And I believe that it's more of the latter, because what I've seen is not any kind of new drones. I've seen DJI Mavic drones, the ones that are dropping grenades, are dropping grenades on a big barrel Russian artillery, such as the the. Pion, I believe it's called, or Tulpan. I, I forgot which one it is. I'll put a picture out here, hopefully. This big gun artillery. This big gun artillery is quite capable to fire it at tens of kilometers away. And the quadcopter drones, they don't fly tens of kilometers away from the front line. So the fact that there were videos of these things being destroyed by quadcopters explains that Russians are operating their artillery very close to front line. So there is something that is forcing them to come closer. And that is very good news. Uh, secondly, another development in drone technology by Ukrainians is we've started seeing some of the FPV drones that are not single-use FPV drones. Essentially, Ukrainians have adapted some sort of a dive bomber tactic where an FPV drone flies down with with their uh, with their ammunition then it releases the bomb and flies away whereas the actual bomb then is being released and is hitting the target uh, when it lands so ukrainians are adapting their fpv drones to not be just a suicide drones but to be a potentially multi-use uh, armament carriers this is again a very good news and very interesting development that i'll be following upon Ukraine is doing a lot of really good and important things. And more importantly, they're also doing certain things in the north. So here at the north, we had Russians attack again uh, around Sinkivka to Liman Persia and so on. The problem here was that the actual experienced troops that were in the area, uh, I've reported on this many, many times, they were sent both to Bakhmut and they were sent both to, to uh, Avdiivka, as we now know, and towards the south, towards Aparizia. Whereas in this area, Russia has brought in those underfitted reserves that they were planning only to start operating in December. And now they thought that it was an equivalent substitution, so they ordered these troops now into attack. So while it was a lot of Russian troops in the area, because they were inexperienced troops, because not pure mobics, but still very poorly prepared troops for the actual combat, they just got their face caved in and Ukrainians have been reportedly able to push back Russians beyond even their starting positions and they're having a very, very, very nasty time, the Russians, obviously. Therefore, as I explained many times before, trust in the armed forces of Ukraine it's going to be fine. Ukraine is doing an amazing job. Many, many Russians are getting uh, absolutely uh, demolished every day. It's obviously coming at a cost for, for Ukrainians. But generally speaking, Ukraine is doing really good. Slavo Ukraini, guys. I love you all. And I'll see you guys next time.